So friends, welcome back to NRS Samai. Thank you for tuning into your community radio. I'm your today's host, Srikant, live from Los Angeles. Uh, recently, I was, do, I was doing some research on women politicians and uh, how many of them genuinely make it to a level where they become a panchayat president or an MPTC, JET PTC or JET P chairman, MLC, MLA or even MPs. And uh, while, while traversing this, uh, this route, I, was, I suddenly stumbled upon a headline that says, IIM Bangalore launches a course for aspiring women politicians. It just uh, ripped my brain and I had a flurry of questions in my mind. Uh, what is this? Is it really possible that uh, there could be such a training that can help our uh, women? So t take any field, uh, no matter what field it is, uh, what, what domain is one works on, you, would, you definitely need some basic training on how to go about it. But uh, politics seems to be one topic where one gets absolutely no training. It's like an ocean where one needs to jump into, try to swim, and, uh, and if, if luck is really on your side, and if you have the real courage, guts, and vigor to make it, you could swim to the shore or you'll be drowned. So this is one reason I personally feel why many people stay away from it, and also dynasty politics ruling the roost. It is simple because the son, daughter, or relative uh, would have first-hand experience and necessary training that they would have gained by closely watching uh, the, the real politics from his dad or granddaughter, granddad. So in the backdrop of this such a phenomenon, we have an incredible guest, Professor uh, uh, Rajiv Gowda, joining us live from Bangalore to help us understand more about uh, this training program that was started in IM Bangalore and how it, it would help the women who are looking to make politics, who are looking to at least get into politics and uh, serve the nation. So Professor Rajiv Gowda ji, thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you, Srikant, for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Thank you, sir. And uh, just to introduce uh, friends about Rajiv Gaudaji, is a, he's a chairperson, Center for Public Policy, and also professor of uh, economics and social science at uh, IIM Bangalore. So uh, a long uh, list of uh, Rajiv Gaudaji's achievements, and uh, uh, he has been building on his uh, political fieldwork, and he has writ extensively written on Indian politics and uh, political parties. So his research also focuses on how people and societies uh, manage risk-related conflicts. He's also a director on Central Board of the Reserve Bank of India, and uh, he has recently been selected as a Carnegie uh, Council Global Ethics Fellow. And Dr. Gowda was also a national runner-up on uh, BBC TV's Mastermind India in 2001. Truly delighted and honored to have you on our show, Dr. Gowda. Sure. Uh, I must mention, Srikant, that I was in NRI for nearly 17 years. I uh, lived in New York, Philadelphia, Berkeley, and uh, Oklahoma. I have a PhD from the Wharton School at Penn, was a postdoc at Berkeley, was a professor at Oklahoma, and returned to India at the turn of the millennium. And I had a wonderful time in the, in the United States, learned a lot, and um, trying to take those lessons and translate them into nation-building activities here. Absolutely, sir. I in NRI is still an Indian, and you being an NRI, and uh, truly coming back home and then doing all this is incredible stuff. You know, I feel honored to have you on our show. Yeah, thanks for reaching out. Yeah, go ahead. I also later in the show will be joining. Uh, we'll be having Pushpavali ji, ex deputy mayor uh, from. Uh, she'll be joining from Mysore, and uh, Vijay Sarada Reddy. Uh, she's an educationist uh, from Guntur. She'll be joining very soon on NRI Samai. We'll also have Shweta Sharma, she'll join from Chhattisgarh. So we'll, we'll have them live on uh, NRI Samai very soon. So, uh, Professor Gowda, uh, first of all, let me ask you this, uh, this question, this simple, uh, and also this is something that I was really fascinated to ask about. How did this idea first kickstart, sir? This is incredible. Uh, actually, as um, India becomes a developed country and a country that competes in the global stage, the challenges of governance also you know, enorm get enormously more complex. And it's important there to have people who not only know how to agitate, how to uh, plan and win elections, but you also need people who know how to govern, who have one foot rooted in the real world, one foot rooted in the world of the future, in the world of policy making. And over the years, what has happened is that um, it's incredibly complex 
this whole uh, policy making arena and uh, so i myself have been passionate about politics from childhood i grew up in a family of freedom fighters and politicians and um, so i did a phd in public policy and management from wharton with the aim of going into um, politics myself and it's still a work in progress but um, you know one of the things that i learned from america was that you can actually distill this kind of um, you know, the essence of policy making and share that with people so that when they are in positions of, uh, you know, where they can make a difference, that they will be able to analyze issues uh, in a multifaceted way, uh, you know, and implement things in the right manner. The challenge, of course, is that, um, you know, something like political science has been taught for a long time, but that is not what we focused on. We focused on empowering people in a multi-dimensional uh, way. And so if you look at the content of our program, it's a very practical program. First, we're asking people to join who are already uh, either motivated or en en engaged in politics. And then we say, okay, what do we need to, uh, you know, to share with you that would take you to the next level altogether? And so we designed the program to have three, four major dimensions. We call them the four Ps. There's a policy dimension, there's a politics dimension, there is a personal development dimension, and there's a perspective, which is gender, ideology, ethics, you know, that kind of a dimension. The politics part is a very unique contribution. It looks at, uh, you know, things like political marketing and political advertising and stuff that you're familiar with in the U.S., but it also looks at practical steps in the, in the Indian context, including how do you build your brand uh, through constructive activities in your neighborhood? How do you uh, take on uh, the government through agitations and public interest litigation? How do you use modern technology to uh, connect with uh, people and mobilize them? You know, so all these sorts of very practical uh, dimensions to, uh, to, uh, to political training. The policy dimension focused on, uh, you know, we call them portfolios. Some of it focused on the essence of uh, politics and economics, but um, a lot of it was if you were health minister, what are the major issues you would need to tackle? You know, things like that. In a short 49-day course, there's only so much you can do, yes. but uh, we certainly tried to bring in multiple dimensions through speakers and uh, lecturers who were either drawn from academia or from the field, either politics or people who are expert in the field. For example, on the issue of ethics, we would have the former Lokayukta of Karnataka, the former Supreme Court Justice Santosh Hegde, he came and spoke and talked about his own experience. He was also part of the India Against Corruption movement. You know, so these sorts of uh, dimensions were there. If we broke the uh, class into two uh, modules. The, uh, in between, we had a whole practical um, uh, two-week field assignment where candidates, uh, where our students had to go back to their constituencies, assess the needs of the constituency, do a SWOT analysis of their competition, you know, their own strengths and weaknesses, a whole bunch of things like that. We had lots of practical field visits and exercises, including a model parliament. And, uh, so the, and then we had visits to Delhi and a visit to Singapore, all oriented towards creating, a, you know, sort of a multidimensional, well-rounded um, uh, curriculum that would do in 49 days what people take, you know, 10, 15 years to learn through uh, experience in the field. Awesome, awesome. Hmm. And also, the objective of this course is to correct the political imbalance, especially in the Indian parliament or wherever it is. It could be uh, at the entire panchayat level or whatever it is. Is this course sure. also designed to, uh, or to help get more women councillors, corporators, ward members as well, sir? I, I'm looking at the rural and the and the high-end perspective of MPs and MPLAs, and also on the other side, we have municipal councillors, corporates, ward levels. So, what sure. objective of this course is it to correct the political imbalance? Yeah, actually, this is a bit of a longer story. Um, uh, you know, the Centre for Public Policy at IIM Bangalore, which I am the chairperson of, our um, uh, the centre's agenda is to improve governance. And um, uh, over the years, we've done a lot of training of the bureaucracy the Indian Administrative Service, the Forest Service, Foreign Service, Revenue Service, you name it, right? Okay. And uh, when I um, uh, took over, and in fact, 
even before I did, my, um, our, we were saying that, look, if we want to really improve governance, we must work with the political class, right? So that was one of the um, uh, motivators. And um, so we've done workshops for MLAs from Karnataka, MLAs from multiple workshops from around the country for MLAs again. And uh, then as I was thinking about what breakthrough kind of initiative I could um, leave as my legacy, I basically honed in on the fact that the most underrepresented segment in Indian politics are women. That is um, uh, at the assembly and pa parliament level. At the Panchayati Raj institution level, whether it's village, city, town, a district, um, in many states uh, you have up to 50% quotas. In some states you have only 33%. But there, there is now a cadre of women who have already come into the political process. Some have come in through family links. Many others have come in through being, uh, you know, capable people who have um, been recognized in, uh, you know, as leaders and given an opportunity. And so the whole thing is now, you know, here you have this amazing imbalance, right? We have lots of powerful political leaders who are women, but we, are not, we don't necessarily have enough women who have been able to break through into assembly and parliament. So I said, let's design a program that would um, be open to anyone with uh, commitment to politics and uh, create the environment which would enable them to break through into the assembly and parliament level. As it turned out, the, uh, you know, probably more than half of our uh, participants were already elected members or had uh, more, actually 20 out of 26 people in the first batch have either contested elections or already hold office. So we have Zila Parishad presidents, we have city corporators, we have uh, Taluk Samiti members, town municipality members, uh, people who have lost MLA elections, you know, things like that. So uh, it's not an urban-centric, elite-centric program. It's a program that is aimed at, um, you know, this new cadre of people who are getting, um, who are on the ground, who are getting the opportunities to break through. And if I may say so, uh, there is this whole women's reservation uh, uh, bill that has passed the Rajya Sabha and has not yet uh, gone through the Lok Sabha, right. Right? right? And if it were to go through, and that would uh, mandate 33% reservations for women in Parliament, in the assemblies, if that were to go through, you would need hundreds of women candidates for Parliament, thousands of women candidates for the assembly elections across the, across the country. Now, um, yes, there are political activists, but why not give them a leg up? Why not give them that uh, opportunity to be even more competitive, right? So if reservations come in, they would be able to sort of walk in without having to learn on the job, right? And so with that sort of motivation, um, you know, we sort of decided to go ahead and uh, create this program. And I joke that, um, you know, when, once reservations come in, I'll have uh, hundreds of uh, students in Parliament and in the assemblies. And, uh, I mean, I want to be there myself, of course, but, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt at all to have, uh, you know, to have uh, students who are in there who are motivated and driven and committed to improving India in every way. Right. And also, I, I feel that uh, you, you missed uh, it, uh, 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 very narrowly last time, I've been reading about you, uh, Professor Gowda, sir, and uh, I'm truly, uh, uh, I, I imagine 2014 and or even going forward would be a lot different for Professor uh, Gowda, for sure. And uh, Well, Srikant, Srikant, I must say, hmm? uh, you know, the NRI community, your audience, could uh, play a huge role in making things happen. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm going to contest whatever happens. I'm going to be using media, mass media, social media, and the track record of activity on the ground to build my own uh, you know, case. And, um, you know, I've partly been denied because politics has become very corrupt and, right. uh, you know, even criminal. And uh, so all of us who want a better India need to come together. And I would appeal to your audience to reach out and stay in touch and in different ways through ideas, energy, resources, time, um, to, uh, you know, we should all be able to work together and um, help transform the country. Absolutely, absolutely. And friends, we are in conversation with Professor uh, Rajiv Gowda. He's a chairperson, uh, Center for Public Policy and Professor of Economics and Social Sciences at uh, Indian Institute of Management, uh, Bangalore. And uh, his website is rajeevgowda.in, R-A-J-E-E-V-G-O-W-D-A.in. 
and you could uh, visit uh, Rajiv sir's website. And uh, uh, Rajiv sir, continuing this conversation, I just wanted to uh, also understand that uh, 2014 election, or even to, uh, for Bangalore election is 2013, right? Uh, uh, fag end of 2013. Karnataka, yes. Karnataka elections is, is definitely, I think, 100 days away from it. So, is, is, uh, c can you give us a sense of how this training program, uh, the earlier batches, uh, would have trained few of these people uh, who are interested in these elections that are coming in uh, probably 100 days, uh, I think uh, we are just 100 days away from it. So, any, any, any sense of uh, how this program has helped few of them? Um, actually, you know, uh, so one of our uh, graduates has become the Zila Parishad president of uh, Chamrajnagar, right? And uh, she may well be a contender for the local assembly sec uh, seat as well in, in Karnataka. And um, uh, so, uh, you know, we had about five, six uh, people from Karnataka. But uh, the majority of them are, I think, waiting for reservations to kick in, partly because they have MLAs and MPs from the same party in their uh, in their constituencies mm -hmm. and um, it's so much easier if uh, you know if, if the system made it possible for them to break through otherwise they have um, you know people blocking them in some ways but uh, what what uh, the program did was give them an give them a lot of ideas give them a network give them support to go out and do something dramatically different so um, you know, one of our. Uh, well, by the way, I must mention to you that out of the 26 people we had, we had uh, participants from, I think, um, you know, 10 different states and from seven or eight different political parties, right? So that's the nice thing about doing it through IAM. It's, it's open to everyone. And um, uh, so one of our one of our uh, students, uh, who is a sitting corporator from Bangalore City, in the two week. Uh, period where we had a constituency assignment, she used that as an opportunity to conduct a major uh, citizen drive, a walkathon focused on eliminating plastic in her constituency. And that has now spun off into making her constituency a model ward. And she's got all kinds of planners and others involved, and in the city government, various agencies are involved. And so when all these things come together, um, she is building momentum to be a person who is looked upon as a thinking, acting, model politician, right? So if not for the fact that there are other uh, people, you know, potentially, um, uh, you know, blocking a path, um, uh, she's building her own uh, reputation and brand, and it won't be uh, too long before I think um, people like her will break through. So what uh, the program has done is um, given people, all of our people, a chance to engage with ideas that are way beyond what their normal scope of activity would allow them to engage in. You know, the world of a politician is um, beset with people seeking personal favors, all kinds of, um, you know, your time is spent in politicking, you know. So you don't really get that much time to sit back and think big, dream big, act and initiate on a bigger, larger, futuristic scale. So this opportunity has really created um, that fire. You know, with the fire was already there, but this is sort of, um, you know, added extra fuel to the fire in our students, and they are now in a position to go out and really dream big and achieve on a scale that, you know, may, they may never have um, uh, thought of before. Excellent. And also... I, I wonder if there will be a lot of interest and enthusiasm from so many folks trying to join this program, right? So, um, do we have uh, a lot of them coming in and then uh, how are these candidates selected for this course? Uh, uh? Sure. Actually, we did press conferences. We put out advertisements. We reached out to political parties. We wrote to every member of parliament. Um, there, there was a certain amount of skepticism. Right, and uh, I think now that we've done the first program and it's received some mega press coverage within India from the BBC and now thanks to you from the United States, um, you know. So now there's a lot of, uh, in some sense, the model is proven, right? And every politician is interested in doing a better job, okay? And um, uh, so essentially, uh, we now have um, uh, political parties that are interested in sending their top women leaders. I've, uh, uh, I've had that kind of an assurance from um, 
from Supriya Sule, Sharad Pawar's daughter, for example, of the Nationalist Congress Party, and um, uh, you know, and uh, you know, variety of other parties are now uh, we engaged with their representatives during our visits to Delhi, etc. So there is, uh, you know, it, the credibility is established. Now um, uh, there are one or two challenges. How do you? create a program that would allow people who are working full-time in the field to also come and participate. So we may have to redesign it from being like a two, three-month full-time program into something that is, um, you know, built into modules or, you know, scattered over the year. I also have a lot of men <laughs> saying, why are you discriminating against men? Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, let me put it this way. I'm not discriminating against men. It's just that the women are the most underrepresented group, and it makes sense for us to, uh, you know, focus on that. And uh, ultimately, I will create the content and share it, um, you know, with everybody. Um, I uh, even have a call from an Australian group, a reform group, which says, let's create content together because they're trying to do something similar there. So um, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's sort of work in progress, but um, I do expect that people will come in. Um, there's another interesting challenge, which is that even at a discounted rate, this is an expensive program for any honest person. Right. right, and um, uh, you know, so people. Uh, I, this time, for the first batch, I was able to raise nearly 80 lakhs worth of scholarships oh. from uh, the government of Karnataka, from UN Women, UN Development Program, and uh, Kiran Mazumdar Shah of Viacom. Uh, oh, right. All put together. If I had not raised the scholarship, I don't think we would have had that kind of participation. And uh, so it's imperative for us to do more on that front. I, I am. Um, uh, you know, finding more. Now that, the, as I said, the model is proven, now it's a question of delivering this content. And, uh, and all, I mean, and my, you know, my dharma as a teacher mm -hmm. is to empower my students, right? Mm -hmm. To make them even better than I am. And, and, and so in that sense, uh, I am very cool and uh, focused on how on earth can I take all this and share it with as many people as possible, okay. right? So I'm very excited about these massively open online courses and, you know, things like that. And um, so I do want, and so, so a lot of your listeners may be tech geeks and others who might uh, be uh, able to help in uh, making these things happen. And, you know, right. so I'm, um, you know, again, uh, issuing a call. Time, energy, ideas, money, resources, anything, any way you can help. Either me or the program, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, let's uh, professionalize politics in the best sense of that word. Exactly, and also uh, with, with the right information and also putting uh, papers on public domain. And there, may, there are many areas where people can write some quick uh, uh, scripts or uh, use their technical knowledge or technical know-how to create some kind of... Uh, of uh, material that can help uh, in this process as well. Yeah, yes, and I urge all the listeners who are listening to this uh, show, uh, you could you could reach out to uh, nrisamai at gmail dot com. You could uh, post us messages on Facebook or Twitter, and uh, we can eventually, if there is any best possible way, you could help in this endeavor. As Rajiv Gaudaji was mentioning, if there is any contribution that you could offer for this program, uh, please do uh, write us to nrisamai at gmail dot com, and we would forward all those information to. Uh, the Rajiv ji uh, uh, and also uh, help in this endeavor. Uh, and uh, we have a question coming right in uh, Rajiv ji. This is from Brahmani and uh, her question is, is there any plan to offer this course, uh, offer this as a full-time course? Um, <coughs> I haven't really thought about that. Um, it's a good suggestion. And, um, well, we've done it under the executive education framework. So those tend to be shorter programs aimed at people who are full-time professionals. And um, so, yeah, I think this is a, thank you, Ramani, this is a very good uh, suggestion. That, uh, I'm not sure, I am is uh, ready for, <laughs> oh, you know, one whole year-long kind of a program. But um, it doesn't have to be necessarily done through the Institute. The Institute has allowed us the platform to bring a lot of talent and ideas and content together. And uh, so maybe this is something that we could just do um, in Bangalore City. I mean, a lot of my uh, 
speakers and teachers and uh, speakers were from uh, the city and from elsewhere, but one could actually create something like this. Um, I, I will um, uh, really ponder on that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just a fantastic idea. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but we have Suresh Ediga from New Jersey. His question to you, uh, uh, Dr. Rajiv, is, is there a possibility to make this course online? I think you touched upon it. Potential women politicians who are residing outside India but would like to come back and become full-time politicians and also is there an easy way to reach out to rural areas? That was his question. Yeah, basically I will, oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's a very good uh, set of questions there. Yes, I, um, it is now possible to move things online and so we will um, uh, endeavor to move, move our uh, course in that direction. And um, uh, the second thing which he points out about rural India this course was conducted in English, which is the medium of instruction at IIM. If I really want to make an impact on the larger country, I have to figure out a way to, uh, you know, have this content delivered in multiple languages. There again, your audience uh, may be able to help because uh, it could be, uh, it could be just um, an effort of translating the PowerPoint slides into different languages. It could be, um, you know, redubbing somebody's. Uh, presentation in a different language, you know, and you have uh, certainly in the Anara community people from, you know, every language. So instead of, um, you know, the uh, world outsourcing to India, maybe I should outsource this to the United States. And uh, uh, I, I really think that if we are able to do this, uh, sorry for laughing here, I'm not laughing at the idea, I'm just uh, at the concept of reverse outsourcing. Um, uh, but basically, um, you know, if we can pull our resources and energy together, we would be in a position to create content that can be accessed by people across the country, especially those who would otherwise not have access to an IIM or are intimidated by the English-driven uh, context. I think that's, again, a very uh, solid idea. Uh, Srikant, are you recording this? I'd like to uh, keep a, a set of all these uh, questions Absolutely. And we have to act upon. Yeah. yeah, you brought up a very important point, and also uh, uh, to all our listeners and also, uh, sir, for your benefit, uh, it's like we have all our recordings uh, on youtube.com forward slash NRI Samai, or uh, also it's available on NRI Samai.com forward slash archives. You could go to any of these locations and then grab uh, this uh, uh, audio, and, and I'll make it a point to send it to you, uh, Dr. Rajiv. Thank you. And we have a question coming in from uh, Sindhu here. Let me figure out. I'll have to scroll up a little bit and then see where uh, I've been seeing a lot of questions. And most of them you have already answered. And uh, so, like, few few people asking me whether uh, you would ex extend this course to men in politics as well. Of course, we have answered and talked about it. And the question uh, from Sindhu is, what kind of response do you receive from this program? What are some of the key questions that these uh, uh, these amazing women ask you in this training program? It's not you training them. There are certain things that you gain knowledge from these uh, people as well. What, what kind of uh, problems or problem scope that these, uh, these women come up with? Um, well, each of, each of them have come up with some... Um, first of all, I'm, I was amazed at the, um, at the quality of our student population. Um, so, for hello? Yes, I'm here. Oh, you're there. Sorry. Yeah, and... Um, uh, each of them has had to deal with some crisis, some issue that, um, uh, you know, that brings out their character, which demonstrates their leadership, you know. And each time, you know, you come across something of that sort, you say, my God, you know, India is blessed to have such uh, committed, capable people. And so it's now a question of taking them, you know, empowering them into taking them to different levels. Now, um, so I have certainly learned a lot from their own experiences. But if you were to ask what is sort of a question that every one of them has, you know, it's the question that everyone asks about I am. It is, it's about placement, right? It's about how do we turn all this into a breakthrough that will give us a ticket, give us a chance to contest uh, and break into the next uh, level. And there, actually, well, I cannot, of course, guarantee that. I, you know, I'm working on that myself. Uh, it's basically um, what I am doing and what we're all doing is, um, um, you know, when I know political leaders from different political parties, I um, uh, would just introduce our uh, uh, students 
to their leadership. So, for example, I mentioned uh, Supriya Sule. She had come to a dinner hosted by the Human Resource Development Minister, Pallam Raju, for all our students when we were in Delhi. And so one of our uh, students, uh, Falguni Rajput from Mumbai, is an NCP person, and this gave us an opportunity to introduce her to her, and, uh, you know, these things help. It helps you break through, and so while it doesn't guarantee placement, it certainly, uh, you know, opens doors, and the IM uh, brand gives you a credibility that, um, you know, that sets you apart from others. And, um, and, and we need to sort of continue to maintain the alumni network, share ideas. Even the uh, Bangalore corporator, she, some of our other students who are activists worked with her on her uh, walkathon against plastic and the initiatives. Mm. So I think what we're doing is we're creating a sisterhood uh, of, um, you know, of people who are trying to bring about positive change. And, um, uh, you know, and my colleagues and I are uh, working with them as well. So it, it's been a very good learning experience. Awesome. And also the fundamental thing is networking. You know, Rajiv Ji, you brought in a very important point. It's not just having great ideas, great thoughts, good intentions, talking about clean politics, but also networking is what matters, right? It's, it's, mm-hmm. uh, that, that's something I see a very credible uh, uh, f- uh, part of this entire program. You said that uh, in Delhi, you there was an NCP uh, candidate who was there uh, for the training program, and uh, they had uh, an opportunity to meet uh, Supriya Shule and others. That, that's sure. something that you're achieving with this program as well. Right, right. And I mean, I must say, our Congress uh, participants met, uh, we met Congress leaders, including ministers. We met uh, BJP leaders, including the opposition leader and others. And so every party, uh, not every party, but uh, most parties had a chance to meet their top leadership as well. So it was, it was a good um, kind of breakthrough. The question is how they will um, take it forward. No? Yeah. Awesome. And uh, uh, this is really uh, a fascinating discussion. I had uh, the really honor to have you on our show today, uh, Rajiv Ji. And uh, uh, I owe it to you. Thank you. Yes, and also I, have, uh, I, I, I personally wanted to thank you because you've given me references of. Uh, few women who has taken this course and uh, in the course of this uh, in interview I'll be talking to um, uh, all three of them. Uh, the, we'll be talking to Pushpa Ji. I think Pushpa Ji is live live on NRS. Am I right now? Pushpa. Are, are you there right now, Pushpa Ji? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, Rajiv Ji, are, are you also? Yeah, I'm still here, but I'll keep quiet. Let, uh, let them speak. Yeah. <laughs> I also, Rajiv, just to mention, I had a conversation with Pushpavali ji yesterday and, you know, fascinating input from uh, these brave women uh, who are uh, are looking into the perspective of politics as a profession. Uh, Pushpavali ji, thank you very much for joining in today. Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, Pushpavali ji, just uh, just for the benefit of our listeners, can you give give us a little bit of your background, please? Mm, I was elected as a corporator in 2001. Mm-hmm. Hello. Yes, I can. can we can hear. hear yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I was, was BCom graduate. Mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, I was from a backward community. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I was elected from a Congress party, Congress party as a corporator, and I was a deputy mayor during that year only. Oh, okay. And, uh, and even uh, my dad was mayor. Okay. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead, madam. Yes, we can hear you. My dad was mayor for the same constituency. So I was uh, elected. I got the seat uh, when the reservation came for that ward. Oh, okay. Then uh, deputy mayor. Then um, I served the corporation for five years, like uh, till 2005. Okay. Then <clears throat> through these external uh, agencies like uh, IAM, CSR, and WPC, Women Power Connector from Delhi, they all gave us training. No? Through that training, we became more active. We were just uh, like listeners when we were elected. We didn't know what to do, what not to do, nothing. We didn't, we didn't have the practical knowledge. Mm. Then the officials won't teach us because they, won't, they don't want we to be active. Mm-hmm. Am I right? Yes, yes, absolutely. So, 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 
So through this external agency, we got trying. You know, we became more active, like uh, participating in the budget meetings. Right. Then uh, we came to know about the gender gender budget. That's the main thing we need. Gender budget. Oh, okay. Yeah, if I may jump yeah, in, Shikant, uh, you know. Yes, yes, right. Uh, Pushpavali, Shikant, may I? Yes, sir, please yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, this um, uh, Pushpavali was kind enough to mention a uh, Center for Social Research in Delhi. That's an organization that's been fighting for women's political empowerment for a long time. And years ago, they had invited me for a talk on gender budgeting. What is the impact of a budget on women? Mm-hmm. You know, does it really help them or not? And uh, they have been crucial partners in this whole enterprise. And, um, uh, you know, as Pushwali points out, they have been doing lots of work on, um, you know, training uh, people at the Panchayati Raj level. Yeah. I'll keep quiet. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Uh, the great piece of information. Yeah, partners. And, uh, yeah, uh, Pushpavali, how did you come, uh, come uh, how, how did you get to know about this program? And uh, uh, what what was your first thoughts? I got a letter from CSR and uh, I am that uh-huh. uh, there is a training program pro- training program for women uh, about the politics. So I was interested. Even though I'm not in the position, I wanted to learn more things and to be active. Even though we, we were not in the position, I want to work and I want to be active. So I I gave uh, a reply. Then they selected me. Oh, awesome! And uh, just in in 2001, you contested uh, the election, and uh, right now you're planning to um, definitely planning to go go ahead and then do it in in the coming years or coming months. So, how do you think yeah, this yeah. program has helped uh, Pushpavali ji? This program has helped very a uh, lot. Mainly, this uh, psychology of uh, psychology and opinion of poll analysis poll analysis, which I was very interested and I am doing that work in my ward because elections are coming uh, maybe in the May or uh, June. Mm-hmm. This session helped us a lot because we wanted to know what the voters want and what the voters' mind is. So I am working on that and I am trying to be successful in that. Oh, very well. Very well said. Oh, okay. And... Uh, uh, are there any questions you wanted to ask Rajiv Ji when, uh, of course, you, you were all there in the classes. Is there anything that you wanted to ask Rajiv Ji that you, that you forgot to ask when you were in the training program? <laughs> no, 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 no. If anything missed out, we to, when we were free, you know, we used to ask him. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and uh, what, what, what's your future plan, madam? Uh, what, what, what is your next, uh, next steps in this process? Next means I want to... Uh, because uh, we have to wait for the reservation for the assembly and the parliament. Mm-hmm. It is not so. It is not so easy to get the seat without the reservation. So I'm. I would like to contest for the corporation election. Coming, it may be come in the month of May, or maybe in the June after MLA election. Mm-hmm. So I'll contest for that elections. So I wanted to serve in the local one more term. Okay. And you're, you're, you're mentioning about reservations, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, as Rajiv ji mentioned, uh, it's, it's, stuck, it's, it's definitely cleared in Rajya Sabha, but it's not cleared in Lok Sabha. So, if, if, at all yeah, reservation, yeah. if at all reservation bill passes, uh, how do you think it's, it's going to help uh, with all this training that you've taken? Do you, do you think there will be a lot of uh, change that we could see? Yeah, yeah, it's very, really, I told you know, before only, without any training, we can't do any work. We will be the be the perfect in the hands of our husbands, our brothers, or maybe father like that. If we learn something from the outside, no, we can work independently. For example, when I was a deputy mayor, I was sitting like a doll without knowing anything. After coming down, no, we got a training from URC like about gender gender budgeting. So in hmm. that program, no, we learned what how to participate and how to enhance the budget for the women's programs. We thought we learned a lot from that. From the next budget, we started what they used to do now for the, they used to keep some amount for the women program, but they were not utilizing that. We didn't know anything about that, no. So when we learned that uh, what to do this program, 
what to do this about this uh, b- budget so we th- we started to use that head like uh, giving training programs or to give some uh, machines like sewing machines for the wom- women uh, and then we then what they used used to do no they used to reappropriate means they used to take off that head and they used to f- they used to use for another uh, for a development work we stopped that also not to touch the women programs uh, amount like that we started hmm excellent excellent and i suppose we have uh, shweta singh joining us from uh, chatisgarh shweta shweta singh uh, welcome to nrs samay thank you thank you so much i'm i'm sure you'd be listening to our Hello. conversation yes uh, shweta can you hear us yeah 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 and uh, i'm sure you'd be you you'd had an opportunity to listen to rajiv ji talking uh, about uh, the, the the training program and we also had pushpavali ji from mysore uh, right now uh, live on nr samai so uh, shweta tell us about your experiences uh, that you had when you uh, when you were in this training program how did you come across this training program you being in chatisgarh and uh, this program being in bangalore what's the motivation behind uh, taking this program Okay. So it was a wonderful experience to be there joining IIM Bangalore such a, a renowned institution and it was really a wonderful experience. I got to know about the program through net. Uh, my brother came across this one and he let me know about this program and then he compelled me to go there. uh since i belong to rural politics that too from chatisgarh so it's quite a small state and uh i'm not that uh, techno savvy so i would have never come across this one but uh, it was a fortune uh, that i could join this institution anyways and be there getting into such a wonderful thing it was really a it was really an awesome experience i learned a lot i learned innovative measures in each and every aspect and i i entered the uh, the moment i entered uh, iim campus i felt like it ha- it's like dream come true for me so it was a wonderful experience really hmm but uh Did, did did you did you ever think that uh, you, you could get trained in 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 politics in an institution like iim yeah to yeah to i could say a uh, quite a good experience it was because since we are doing politics uh, for more than 10 years uh, we are into this feel and uh, i thought everything is going well why would i go there and waste my 3 months all along and then but when i experienced the things i got to know about uh, so many different ideas like we could apply in politics because politics nowadays need to be refined rejuvenated reinvented i should say we need to have different types of leader in country because like country is going through uh, like critical uh, passage now so uh, we need to have good leaders educated ones with innovative ideas so when i went there i studied there i learned lots of things with rajiv gora sir he is he is a wonderful person the whole team was wonderful very cooperative and the since i have come back Uh, from i am i have experienced lots of change uh, inside outside i mean now i apply all those measures what i learned in bangalore like like whatever decision i take i take those decision keeping in mind what all i have studied there so it's quite a helpful thing it's, it's wonderful very good very good and what what was your backdrop earlier and uh, what's what's it uh, uh, i know uh, how is it before this training program and how is it right now and what is your future plan yeah before this training program i was quite a different personality 
it's it's like a before and after drastic change in myself i find it and i think people also find it because i was a very shy like person before i entered the campus uh, i could do this course and i could never speak a single line in front of anyone i i was camera shy i w- i used to start shivering uh, standing on the podium and looking uh, to the crowd and now it's utterly different it has given lots of exposure it has given me lots of confidence it has uh, it has taught me how to express myself in front of people and how to be confident and how uh, to speak in uh, expressive way in friendly way and all those things i mean i have changed utterly i have changed totally so now i feel ki there is nothing impossible for me and since i was a sarpanch we have a three tier panchayati raj system in india so i used to be a sarpanch now i'm a district parishad member so i know this will this is going to help me a lot in my future politics and this is a milestone of my political career oh Hello? awesome you you are mentioning about three tier uh, panchayat system can you can you elaborate on that ma'am little bit yeah we have a three tier panchayati raj system in india like uh, the um, uh, elementary level the primary level is sarpanch that is the head of the village then we have bdc members that is block development committee members that and those people are selected from 10 to 12 gram panchayats that is village and then we have district panchayat members from around uh, uh, 70 to 80 villages and now i am a district panchayat member so we have a three tier system and it's the biggest biggest ever uh, system in all over the world um, because we have crores of uh, panchayat representatives in india and these are these representatives are the backbone of the political system in india excellent excellent uh, sir rajiv sir uh, just to come back to you we have pradeep kumar uh, pratipatti from uh, machli patnam uh, he is asking you a question sir uh, sitting and teaching politics in in classrooms uh, bring in good politicians and also he is asking asking i have also heard the fees uh, of 4 lakhs uh, is is little bit high are you working on this uh, uh, his, his these are the questions here yeah i uh, didn't fully grasp the first question but is is the question asking how can we teach politics in the classroom yeah do, do you think sitting and teaching the politics in classrooms can bring in good politicians okay well you know people have to be out in the field and they have to uh, experience the realities but uh, uh, more, you know as i said 20 out of 26 of our students were uh, participating in in the real world they were in elections or holding office so we had people who were very grounded in reality um uh, yeah the uh, we have faced a certain amount of questions about can you teach politics in the classroom well you know we've been teaching uh, politics is a practical art practical craft well so is business and uh, we've been teaching business for more than 100 years so the challenge is for the uh, you know academic world to find a way to create the curriculum to bring in a mixture of um theory and practice to bring in practitioners activists uh, you know bureaucrats uh, politicians everyone so that uh, you know the reality comes through so i do think we can do this and we can make it um we, you know in every field americans are very good at that right they turn everything into a systematic science and uh, we can work towards that ourselves now um uh, the second thing about the four lakhs look i mean this is a you know it was a 47 49 day program it was you know fully residential three meals a day stay and then the trip to delhi the trip to singapore actually it it, it uh, probably cost a lot more than that much you know so it, it sounds like a lot and that's where um the scholarships came in very helpful right 
Right. And uh, so I do uh, request uh, your lis- listeners to think about uh, you know, sponsoring scholarships also. If um, they are not in a position to come themselves, uh, they can help more politicians get trained because uh, you know, a program like this costs a certain amount of money. This is a deep discount program from IAM. Normally, a program of this sort would have cost about 10, 11 lakhs. Right. And um, yeah, so we'll, we'll um, you know, we, we're going to try and make it more accessible. And as I said, we'll try and put it online and make it open to anybody. Excellent, sir. And we have uh, Raghu Nandagiri from Hyderabad asking you a question. Sir, decentralization, Article 7273, uh, is, uh, is something that's on cards, and it didn't, unless and until decentralization is the reality, there's hardly any changes we could bring at the, at the grassroots level of panchayat and block, uh, block level uh, politics. So, uh, do, you, do you ever think, with the kind of politics that we are in right now, that decentralization would, would be a reality and you would have a, a training program on how decentralization will help these women? Yeah, see, decentralization is already a reality. A lot of resources go directly to uh, Panchayat Raj institutions, and um, they are also empowered to make a lot of decisions. As Pushpavali was just pointing out, um, because the elected representatives are often new, the bureaucrats, the government officials, end up influencing or, uh, or dictating decisions. And so it's extraordinarily important for the political uh, elected representatives to also be um, you know, knowledgeable and attuned to how to work the system, how to get things done, etc. And so that's where this sort of a program really helps. Um, at the Panchayati Raj level, there are, we have had um, reservations for quite a while. We've had a very aggressive affirmative action program that creates opportunities for many people from different backgrounds to enter and um, even hold office. And so at that level, there are quite a few uh, training programs that have been set up by many different organizations, and uh, Pushwali mentioned a few, uh, you know. So uh, at that level, there's a certain amount of intervention. At the MLA MP level, there's practically nothing, and that's what we were, uh, that's the gap we were trying to fill. Um, decentralization is a reality. It is going to become even more of a reality as uh, p- people in the Panchayati Raj system get more expertise, get more, get more uh, adept at uh, you know, working the system and getting things done. Absolutely. I hope his uh, question is answered for sure. And uh, we have uh, Sarada Rediji uh, live on NRI Samai right now. She's, uh, she's, uh, she's uh, right now uh, live from Guntur, if I'm right. Uh, Sarada Ji, Namaste. Uh, welcome to NRI Samai show. Hi, Namaste. Namaste, madam. Thank you very much uh, for joining. Hello. Yes, I can hear you, madam. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 I, yeah. I, I really... I really appreciate your time because you, your perspective is absolutely important. You have no connection with politics. You have all along been a social activist trying to uh, bring in some uh, uh, real, realistic change and empowering women. So how, uh, uh, let me understand that this is a course on politics and you are into the social work. How, how did you tie these two together and then uh, looked into a different perspective? Uh, actually, I'm an educationalist. Uh, I'm in this field of uh, professional education uh, in uh, running various professional in- education institutions from the last 30 years. Uh, this has given me the opportunity to excel myself as a woman entrepreneur in education and service sector with a corporate social responsibility. So I am very much interested about the politics first of all, uh, but uh, this course has given me a uh, lot of uh, basic idea about the politics and uh, after joining in this course, it has given me an insight, nuance about the entire ga- gamut of the politics with professional approach to become a real people's representative. Hmm. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Ma'am. Yeah, I have been more... Yeah, I'm pardon. Oh, okay. So, so you, you, hmm. your, your backdrop is educational institutions and you have uh, nothing uh, tied to politics. So w- w- how did uh, yes. this transform you? What, what thoughts are you having right now, before joining and after joining this course? And th- that only, before joining, I don't know anything uh, about the politics, just uh, I have an idea about the politics. Uh, but after joining this course, uh, 
uh, I, I felt that uh, a woman is equally competent uh, to rise to the heights provided opportunities like equal rights, uh, separate reservation politics and economic opportunities. And this would the real respect that could be given for a woman in a civilized society for which programs like Women in Leadership conducted by IIM Bangalore would be highly beneficial in terms of knowledge, experience, skills, and professional approach to the politics with clear understanding and administrative affairs concerning people. I learned this from the course before I am very um, less knowledge in the politics. So now I am eagerly interested to choose this as politics as a, my profession. Excellent, excellent. And what, well, if, I, if I had to ask you, I have uh, Shweta uh, ji also on the line. If I had to ask first uh, Shweta ji, uh, what's something that you learned in this course that you are immediately applying right now uh, uh, in a society? Yeah, uh, actually I always wanted to empower uh, women in my area. So I have learned how to deal with them, how to uh, bring them forward, how to make them united, how to teach them uh, to become self-dependent. And so I'm working very hard in this field. I've come with lots of experience, uh, with lots of beautiful experience, uh, knowledgeable things. So I'm, I am making them to learn I mean, what I got to learn in IIM Bangalore, I'm making them to learn here in Chhattisgarh because uh, because of their financial conditions and so many restrictions, they're not able to go far, far away to learn something in life. So I'm making them to learn all those things in Chhattisgarh, in my particular area. So what I have gained, so they should be, uh, they should also be benefited by those things. So I'm working uh, in the field of women empowerment and what I feel programs like this should be replicated all over the country in every possible way because it's, because in India women are in a very pathetic condition like women, a woman enters politics she leaves the politics half the way because she has got so much of restriction so much of foundation so much of practical problems in life, household problems, then other problems, then I am, I am making them uh, to come forward to, uh, so, uh, it's very easy to enter politics, but it's equally tough to sustain in politics. So right. these things I have learned, see how to sustain in politics. We, we won't ever leave uh, this field in between. We must reach the peak of this politics. We excel in this field and women are equally eligible in each and every field. Excellent, excellent. And Rajiv ji, I think there's the, one other answer that could be given to a listener who was asking about how this 4 lakhs is worth it and how, how do you reduce it. I see a chain reaction going on here. You see, uh, you, you train Shweta, Shweta uh, uh, Sharma ji, who's right now from the, who's at Chhattisgarh, and she is training in turn uh, uh, a bunch of other uh, women and uh, applying your, uh, the skills that she learned at IIM Bangalore uh, to, uh, in, in her area. So this is like creating a chain reaction, right? Absolutely. I mean, I am very happy to hear that because, um, you know, the ultimate aim is to have as much of a transformational impact as possible. And uh, congratulations, Shweta, for taking it forward. And, um, you know, you. I've also had people asking me in Bangalore, why don't you do this for the youth in uh, colleges? You know, and I told them, look, after this is the first time we did it, we've got a lot of people who have uh, liked the program, including those who came and spoke. So maybe we'll start doing this in such a manner that um, you know, this would be accessible and help improve the capabilities of uh, political leadership uh, across the board at every level. Absolutely, and then uh, it's it's been past one hour. I, I sincerely appreciate uh, Rajiv ji for this uh, this uh, making this program a reality. You know, uh, bringing in such stories to light and making people feel that there is something around there around them that's going to help them in their endeavors. 
and also politics has been such a um, such a complex cobweb that people are unable to crack or understand every uh, every field or domain that's out there people get get can get some basic training you, you know so for for any any domain in the, on this planet except for politics and that's exactly one reason i strongly feel uh, dynasty politics is ruling the roost and uh, thank you very much rajiv ji for making the uh, for making this show a reality thank you for reaching out and uh, really enjoyed the oh thank you thank you very much and uh, pushpavali ji from mysore i am sure that you logged off right now uh, unfortunately we couldn't uh, hang in there for a long time pushpavali ji thank you very much for tuning in today and then uh, answering our questions and also enlightening uh, our folks out there who are willing to join politics and take it as a profession moving forward uh, i think your inputs are extremely important for them uh, to gain in such confidence and uh, sarada redigaru thank you very much for joining in from guntur and thank you very much for your inputs and insights and also uh, uh, shweta ji thank you very much for joining in from chatisgarh i know it's very late in the evening and uh, i really yeah, sincerely appreciate thank your time pleasure <laughs> talking to you yeah, thank, yeah. You. thank you so much thank you thank you one oh. rajiv bye bye so friends yeah. that's what rajiv gowda ji uh, is the chairperson for center for public policy and uh, professor of economic uh, professor of sciences at indian institute of management bangalore and uh, as 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 you all, as you all know comp- uh, politics is a complex uh, entity and as a country celebrates uh, every year a women's day uh, data on parliament uh, across the world reveals that india the largest democracy lags much behind other countries including its neighbors such as pakistan bangladesh and nepal when it comes to women participation in politics and uh, it's fundamentally important to talk about this topic and there are few people around good honest people around us who are willing to train empower women and encourage them to enter into politics so with only 11% of representation in women in lok sabha right now and 10.7% uh, in rajya sabha india ranks 105th in the world according to the latest comparative data released by inter parliamentary union an international organization that works for promoting democracy in the world so it's, it's truly important that such a program from imm bangalore i'm sure it's going to help i was wondering if this program is extremely expensive and also it's it's tough for people uh, to really uh, know that such and such program is going on in bangalore but now i feel after listening to shweta sharma and also from pushpavali and sharada reddy i imagine this becomes a chain reaction there are few people who can afford and then take this training and then and in the in turn apply it in their uh, in their native villages or towns or mandals or wards wherever it is and uh, this this program is is fascinating and uh, that was uh, our uh, show for today do tune in to nri samay every week same time on saturday and sunday 8 am pacific time 11 am eastern time 10 am central time and also london time it would be 4 pm and uh, india time it would be 9:30 pm ist i we sincerely appreciate rajiv gowda ji's time today and uh, enlightening our listeners about this program and also we appreciate the time of pushpavali ji sarada reddy garu and uh, shweta sharma from chatisgarh thank you very much and uh, do tune in uh, listen to our archives on youtube.com/nrisamay you can like us on facebook facebook.com/nrisamay you can also tweet us on twitter.com/nrisamay thank you very much friends for tuning in today listen to this wonderful music